morning, everybody. Hey, John and Susan. Good morning. Hi, Jane. Thank hope everybody's having a good morning. I hope your weekend was restful or rejuvenating or inspiring in some way. I got to see some friends on a, on a masked hike yesterday, which was fun. And I like hunkering down in the winter, I have to say. We baked some banana bread, cooked some good Indian food. Yeah, so there are ways to be good. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, sir. Hi, Marla. Oh, so happy everybody's here. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Gail. Hey, Ray. Hi, Judy. Welcome, everybody. Oh, my goodness, this dog. I like to play around with the set, <laughs> as you can see. It's just fun to have something interesting by, by my side. <laughs> All right, let me just fix this a little bit. Here we go. We'll get started. So welcome. I'm Annie Moyer. This is Sun and Moon Yoga's YouTube channel. And somebody found a squeaky toy. Nope. Nope. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm here. <laughs> so we'll do that again. Welcome, I'm Annie Moyer. This is Sun and Moon Yoga's YouTube channel. <sighs> so one of my least favorite things is to get in the car, especially on a cold winter morning, and find out that my tires need air. You know that, that thing, that sign comes up on the dashboard if your car lets you know that. And it, it's, it's always been really disconcerting for me and I get rattled and frustrated. And like, if I'm running late, especially, do I have time to put the air in the tires? And if I don't have time, am I gonna blow out a tire? Am I gonna get where I'm going safely? So, and what I've learned over the years is that if you check your tires routinely and you just put the air in, even if you're not sure if it needs it, and you check the, the pressure and everything's good, and, and you begin to make it a routine, then on a cold winter morning when the tires go low, as they often do, and that sign comes on, it's not as rattling. And it's just a, a matter of routine. Like, okay, I'm gonna stop at the gas station. I'm gonna top off the air and everything is good. And I'm using this as an analogy for, for self-care, for routine practices that we know cushion us for times when the ride could get bumpy. And then when the ride does get bumpy, we have a set of tools in place that we're, we are accustomed to practicing. And then we know where to turn. We know what to do. And it's not as jarring. So we can ride easy. That's why I called this class Easy Rider. So we're looking for ways to cushion, to bolster, to support in a routine way, in an easy way in a way that becomes habitual, like checking the air and putting the air in the tires can become habitual and then it doesn't jar us when the need arises unexpectedly. So we'll do a short practice this morning that keeps us close to the ground on the mat, lying down and seated for the most part. So I invite you to come to your mat with, as you lie on your back with your knees bent. And we'll start there. So 
So as you feel yourself settling into the ground, maybe there's like a sense of melting, a sense of, of um, weightedness dropping down. And I like that feeling. I find it comforting. I think it can be instructive if anxiety starts to, uh, starts to creep in, if energy starts to feel agitated. A weighted feeling of dropping to the ground can help. And with your hands on your belly and the simple breath in and out, you may begin to feel the rise and fall of the abdomen. And you may tune in to the natural course of breath and the way it helps you relate to the weightedness of your flesh and bones. And then gently begin to encourage the movement of the pelvis rolling forward and back as you coordinate movement with breath. Easy forward, easy backward. You'll feel your lower back articulate itself into the floor and away from the floor, an expression of flexibility to whatever degree that's present in your spine. We're not asking it to be anything other than what it is. And then back to center, a simple neutral position. Separate your feet a little bit wider and rock the knees side to side. And as the knees go one way, allow your head to go the other way. and back to center and step the feet together again. If you're still wearing socks, like I just realized I am, you can take them off so that you get <coughs> some traction on the mat. And then root your feet into the ground, spread your toes a little bit, arms by your sides, and inhale, gently raise your hips up away from the ground and then release them back down. Inhale as you rise and you can press the floor away from you with your feet. And then exhale as you release down and perhaps pull the floor towards you with your feet. And then just keep rising and falling gently with ease. And maybe you can conjure up this sensation of, of air in your tires or a cushion beneath your seat as you rise gracefully and as you land softly. Now pause for a moment next time you land, and this time the arms move with the inhale reaching up and back, and then dropping down on the exhale. Do that a few times. And then put them together so the feet press into the ground and perhaps push it away from you a little bit as you lift the hips 
and raise the arms, reach back, lift up, and then exhale, pull the floor towards you with your feet, softly land the hips and the arms back down. Do that a few more times. So this practice that is akin to checking the air in your tires, this gentle self-care ritual is very simple in my estimation. It's, it's, we're not here to challenge ourselves. That's for a different context to serve different purpose. Right now, the intention is to restore, is to comfort, is to uh, ritualize and inspire something that's easily accessible at any and all times. And then land next time you land and pause for a moment. And then take both arms up, reaching them to the ceiling, up vigorously through the fingertips. Maybe you feel your shoulder blades spreading apart away from each other. And then wrap your arms around you, giving yourself a big hug. And your fingertips can reach around on the sides or maybe the backs of your shoulder blades and give yourself a little little um, squeeze and press with the fingertips, a tiny little self-massage. Keep the arms crossed. Pull the knees in towards you. They can be together or apart wide. And then stretch up your legs, cross one in front of the other, and then bend the knees again. And then just roll a little bit from side to side. So that's all. Just a big... Sweet self-hug. And now look at which leg is on top and which arm is on top. And then redo the whole thing. Squeeze and press in with your fingertips. Find some juicy spots all around your shoulders. And then rock a little bit from side to side. So is this yoga even? Is this even yoga? Of course it is. 100% it is. It is a connection of mind, body, breath, and spirit. It is a, an intentional presence in the moment using the body and all of the accompanying tools we have. And then release everything back to the floor. Arms by your sides, feet down on the ground. Let's go back to that flowing bridge for a few more rounds of easy breath, gentle flow, rising with a cushion underneath and landing softly. And then next time you come back down, land, breathe, and feel softness underneath you and all around you. Perhaps hands on the belly. Check in to feel a breath. Feeling it from the inside and touching it from the outside as the hands recognize the shape change of the torso. And then stretch your legs out, straighten them out in front of you, dig your heels into the floor and create a momentum of movement with your feet pressing forward and back. And the faster you go, the more you may feel your body sloshing on the ground. So we're, we're uh, giving it some gas and then letting up on the gas with the feet pressing forward, reaching back quickly, quickly. So we're propelling this movement just by virtue of the feet moving quickly and the heels digging in for traction. And the challenge here is not to try to control what the rest of the body is doing. It's just the feet that are moving. 
And then gently let it release. The feet maybe flop out to the sides. And then check in again. A scan from head to toe. And a breath in and out. And then bend your knees as you're ready. Roll to your side. Come up to sit. And with one knee bent, extend your other leg out to the side. So it can be at any angle, doesn't matter. When hands behind you on the ground to press down, and then as you inhale, rise up. And on the next exhale, bow forward through the open space between the two thighs, leading with the belly and propelling a little bit of leverage with your hands pressing down behind you, a soft, easy fold. We're looking for a torso that's elongated from sitting bones up to crown. So we're not, we're not um, collapsing at the waist or in the ribs. We're really extending an expression forward with the belly and with the heart. And however far down you fold is not relevant. The, the relevance is the lengthened spine, the grounded seat, and space for breath. You may also experience a nice opening in the inner thigh, in the groins. And then come back up and then switch legs. Hands behind you, pressing down gently. Create some leverage to lift and then leading with your belly and your heart on the exhale, extending forward. Slow, steady breaths. If it's more comfortable to have your hands in front of you, that's great. They can be anywhere they need to be. Noticing the breath arriving and noticing it depart. And then come back. And switch legs, returning to the first side. This time, turn toward the bent knee. So the, we're adding a twisting element to it. And now one hand can be between the two legs and the other one can be off by the outer hip. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bow down. So instead of bowing down through center, we're bowing down over the knee. And after a few breaths, and you may notice the sitting bone of the straight leg starts to float up. Let that happen and maybe come down even further. Perhaps support you with your elbows on the ground. Maneuver the flesh any way you need. So if, if the belly and the thigh are meeting uncomfortably, scoop the belly around to the center area between the legs or more to the other side, depending on how much um, twisting your spine can sustain. So there's all degrees of possibility here. We don't want to limit ourselves. The only limits that we impose are the ones where we bump up against pain. And then, and then that's, that's the edge. Those are the signposts that we know not to go beyond. And come back up. Deep breath in and then switch sides again. So rather than bowing down through center, we'll take a big inhale, rise up, lift, and then twist toward the bent knee to exhale and take another fold. Pause for a few breaths. And then maybe it feels right to fold a little further down and let the sitting bone float up away from the ground. Support yourself however you want. Hands on the ground, elbows on the ground. Maybe your head wants to come all the way down onto the hands. 
So you, you see there are very few rules here and almost always the rules apply universally, which is don't do anything that hurts. Follow your breath, stay connected to the ground and feel space in your spine. Those are the rules. Almost always, those are the rules. And it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. And then come back up gently, slowly. Now let's take both knees bent, soles of the feet together, and hold on to your knees, cradling them with your palms, perhaps, or maybe outer thighs are more comfortable to hold on to. And rather than pressing your knees up or pulling them down, just let the support that's on the outer legs meet the weight of the legs themselves dropping out. And just sit here for a few breaths. And then inhale, reach up. And exhale, fold down. And this time, round the spine back. Puff up and out through the back upper spine. Spread the shoulder blades apart from each other. Make a deep cave for the heart and allow it to retreat back into that back wall. And then inhale, bring your heart forward, lift your knees a little higher, lean the shoulders back, lift your gaze. And go back and forth a few times. Exhale as you puff the upper back behind you, making a deep cave for the heart. Inhale. Bring the spine forward, lift the heart, go back and forth. Keep breathing, keep moving. Keep a connection with the ground and an awareness of space inside. And then Pause the next time you rise up and come to a center position, a neutral spine. Bring the knees together, sitting tall. And now repeat the same spinal movements, but this time your legs are together. And if your body is craving, or your nervous system perhaps, are craving more challenge, you can consider doing this a little more quickly. Quickening the pace of the movement and the breath. So maybe you can inspire a little needed energy inside, even if you have nowhere to go today. <laughs> nowhere to go and a long list of things to do. This could be like a, a, an inward turning walk around the block, invigorating perhaps. All right, and then back up to center. Now hold your legs with something, a, a, a hand, a wrist, an arm, crook of the elbow, and then twist to one side sitting tall. And then release and go the other way. And then do that a few times. And one more time to each side. And then pause at center. And now come onto your side. So and prop yourself up with one hand holding the head. Bend your top leg. 
and straighten the bottom leg and put your foot on the ground. And now take your arm that's in front of you or on top, reach it up, reach it over, drop the head, extend the arm and reach, reach, reach. Deep breath. And then release the top arm. And you can either roll over to the other side or press yourself up and swivel your legs around. So start out propping the head, straighten the bottom leg, cross the top leg over, and then release the head. Both arms reaching up beyond the crown of the head. And then release and bring yourself up. And now come onto your hands and knees. Drop your hips back towards your heels for child's pose. Knees can be wide or together. Anything to support your knees or your hips or your ankles. Blankets between the knees or behind them or under your ankles. And float down. With your arms extended out in front of you, lift up your chest, lift up your gaze, center one hand out in front of you, and then take the other arm and reach it underneath so your arms come to 90 degrees from each other. And then drop the head and look under your arm. We're looking for a, a side stretch with the, on the side of the arm that's extended forward. also experiencing a little bit of a twist. And then come back up and go to the other side. Slow and easy with the breath. Gentle with the body, soft in the heart. And then gently retract the arms. Come back up, sit with your legs crossed. Inhale, both arms up, rising tall. Exhale, reach over for a simple side body stretch. And then back up and over to the other side. And back up and gently float the arms down. And Pause for some quiet, easy space inside. Some moments of respite from this strange and awkward world. <laughs> With full recognition of all of the external challenges all of the very real struggles that are present today. Also, we can fully recognize an inner refuge, a soft space in the heart, a willing place in the belly, an alert and calm space along the spinal column. Breathe into all that with everything you know, with everything you fear, with everything 
you don't choose. Breathe into what you also do choose. And then gently bring your palms together. Have a moment of gratitude. I thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Take good care. Bye-bye.